Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Virgin Media Dublin International Film Festival. My name is Gornia Humphreys, and I'm delighted to welcome you to a very special conversation as part of this year's 20th anniversary. One of the things that we've been thinking about a lot is around previous festivals, previous guests, and I suppose the role that the festival has in, in Dublin and in Ireland, and of course, within the film community. And I'm delighted that today we're going to be joined by one of our finest actors who screened many films in our festival over the years. Andrew Scott, good to see you. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Gronia. Lovely to see you. I've mentioned the fact that we've shown a lot of your films, but I'm always conscious of the fact that you've, you were someone who's been connected with the, the kind of Dublin film community and, and the industry for a long time. If I was to go back to the start with, with you know, Korea, it probably yeah. feels like... A while ago, does it? <laughs> That's very diplomatically put, Corny. It does. <laughs> it does feel like a while ago, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The um, Korea was the first first film that I ever did. First professional job. I was in fifth year in school. I was seventeen, um, and it was a called black movie um, that we shot in um, uh, nineteen ninety four. Wow. Yeah, with Donald Donnelly, and it came to the festival. It was the it was the closing. Yeah, uh, film of the f festival in 1995, and I was doing my leaving search at the time. Um, so I was very excited. I'd never been in a film before. I'd never been to a film festival before. I'd never. So it was on in the. I'd obviously been to the. It was on in the Savoy, um, the Savoy one. That beautiful. I love the Savoy one. I've always loved it. Um, uh, that big sort of sweeping uh, kind of auditorium. So I remember it very, very clearly, even though it was 155 years ago. <laughs> Well, uh, the reason I'm asking is because I was at that screening and I remember the beauty of those. It's based on a John McGahern short story, isn't it? There's short these story, beautiful yeah. sort of shots of, of, mm -hmm. of the, the kind of landscape as, yeah. as, as well. It was a really, really rich, beautiful film to, to watch. And were your family and everybody there? Oh, you? yeah, yeah. Um, my, family my, turn out. <laughs> yeah, they did. Well, you know, my mom, Nora, is a great film fanatic and uh, she comes to the film festival um, every year. Um, and probably actually she may not have gone before Korea. I suppose that was something that she, she may not have done before maybe, but I suppose when, when um, her kids became involved in the film industry a little bit, I suppose her interest um, increased as well. So um, yeah, the whole family there, it was a Wednesday night. <laughs> so weird things you remember. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I was doing like my mocks or something. It was kind of around, would have been around that time, wouldn't it? Sort of, yeah. this time of the year. And uh yeah, it was it was incredibly exciting and, and and also really good because it was a very um just a very beautiful film that Cahill Black uh, directed and uh, uh, I remember Donald Donnelly was the played my father and he played the it was about a father and son sort of relationship and he was um, uh, you know the very best kind of person that you could start your film career with because he was incredibly kind to everybody on the set and you don't really. You know, I'm always very aware of that when you're on film sets. The the lead actor sets the tone. And um, if a young actor has never been around uh, uh, film sets or film crews before, they really, you're, you're like a sponge. So you learn how to treat people. And he was such a brilliant um, person to learn from because he was incredibly gracious and kind. Um, and I've been on sets uh, subsequently where that isn't the case. So um, I'm I'm always an enormously grateful to, to Donald Donnelly um, for that, yeah. Can I ask you something that I, I know has happened a number of times during the festival, but it's always very amusing is when the filmmakers are standing at the front and they, they recall the films that they had seen in that cinema before, whether it was like yeah. Indiana Jones or Star Wars or whatever. Yeah. So for you, was that kind of a similar dynamic? Suddenly there you're looking at yourself on the screen oh, that you've watched so these other strange. films. I mean, it's, 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 it's actually got worse. The, the idea of looking at yourself on screen has got worse because I always say it's like, it's like listening to yourself on a, you know, when you hear yourself on someone else's answering machine or whatever, you always think, I don't sound like that. But when you see yourself on screen, it's 10 times worse and it's also magnified 10 times. But uh, yeah, on the Savoy, <laughs> on the Savoy one, um, it was particularly uh, uh, scary. The first film I ever saw was E.T., which was at the Savoy one. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, uh, a great first movie to have seen. And also I have a very strong memory of seeing postcards from the edge. Wow. Like, wow. wow. It was, I remember it very clearly because it was just before I had like 
junior cert exams or something and I went with my mum and she I was kind of we had to work really hard the way you kind of do just before the exams and we went in to see a film and even then I was a huge um, Meryl Streep fan I still still am and uh, and I remember seeing that very clearly there was only maybe three people in the cinema again it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday evening and I remember being brought into the, the Savoy and uh, it's got it's got a great atmosphere that that um that uh, uh auditorium doesn't it yeah, you know that it's not the way it used to be. Yes. You know that it's been split up. So yeah. some of that, although there's a rumour that they're actually going to put it back to the old kind of 800 seater. Yeah, you I should. know. I mean, you know, if you've got that, why not? If you've got it, flaunt it. Absolutely. And it also gave it a huge kind of prestige. There was always a real buzz in the foyer yeah, and out exactly. onto the street, you know, and you had lots of people going, what on earth is going on? Who's exactly. there? Yeah, you know, it's sort of, it's, it sort of suits the architecture of O'Connell oh, Street, I think so well. And the next film I wanted to ask you about is a film I really remember so clearly, which is Drinking Crude. <laughs> in the screen, which was a great screening with Owen McPolan and McPolan, the gang. Yeah. 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 So um, Drinking Crude is hilarious. I've, I've never um, seen uh, drink, Drinking Crude since, but I have <laughs> enormously good um, memories of it. Drinking Crude was shot for genuine, genuinely about 25 euro. We had our catering in, our catering was in the back of, the catering department was in the back of a boot of a car. We took out your ham and coleslaw rolls. Um, we got changed and on the street, we shot it in Tralee in Dublin and we went over to London for a couple of months. I don't think we got paid. We might have got a little bit of something. <laughs> um, and it was with uh, Eva Berthesill. Yeah. Where, that's where yeah. I met Eva Berthesill, who is one of my closest uh, lifelong friends and Colin Farrell, yeah. you may have heard of. And um, we had a great time and it was so exciting. It really, really was. And then it got into the Dublin Film Festival, which we were all thrilled about. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that film even, I don't know if it's why. I haven't it seen it. I haven't seen it since, but I have such strong memories. And we actually said it to Colin when we were talking to him last year about that screening and about the energy. And you genuinely seem to have a great time on it. Oh, we did. You know, we had a really, so... genuinely brilliant time. I mean, we were 19 years old and um, uh, yeah, we we're just going away. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I was very, um, I started so early after I left school. I am. Um, I was kind of in the industry. I was working down the road in the Abbey Theatre when I was 18 or 19. And, you know, I remember I finished a, a job in the Abbey when I was 19 and I went off to, to Tralee to, um, with, with Colin and Eva to, to make that film. And I mean, it was just stupendous that you would be able to get, get him to do that. And uh, uh, yeah, and then we went to the film festival and I think maybe we had more than uh, Alan Coleslaw rolls that night. Maybe I think you did. For, if I, maybe ba I vaguely film, remember. Film festival might have given us a bit, couple of olive arms. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you were back in the Savoy a couple of years later for, for, uh, for closing night actually with uh, Dead Bodies. Dead Bodies, right, yeah. Which I have no memory. I mean, I have mem mem memory of the film, but I don't remember the um, evening. <laughs> what the hell was going on with me there? I don't know. But so that was the closing night, was it? That was closing night and everybody was there. The whole gang was there. And again, I remember that screening and it just because I actually watched it again at the weekend. And you it did really, not. I did. It's great fun. Yeah, Andrew, you're fun. a dark dangerous character i could tell you early signs of darkness there growing in right yeah 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 i think i think yeah some of your some of your fan base should go back and see where it started you know um <laughs> and sean mcginley yeah. is sean a great McGinley. cast oh yeah and jerry mcsorley and um kelly riley was in it and um yeah it was it was it was uh it was brilliant robert quinn made that movie again i, had, I was living in london at the time i was about 25 and um i came back to dublin which i hadn't actually worked a lot in Dublin and I was getting I was getting it sometimes happens it's a fear for a lot of Irish actors when you go abroad that you sort of worry that you're going to people are going to forget about you a little bit when you go when you go so I was really happy to go back and I hadn't played a kind of a lead role in that sense uh, for a good while in, in Ireland um, so yeah it was a sort of a dark role and what's, what's what sort of happens to you when I was in my twenties, I had a little sort of innocent Irish face, so I wanted to play things that were a little, <laughs> a little darker. So my dreams came true. He's very dark. I had actually forgotten exactly how dark that film is. I was sitting there thinking, it's "Oh, it's a kind of black yeah. comedy. It's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. tough." 
<laughs> um, yeah. It was a world premiere, and I wanted to ask you about that, about about world premieres. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. About being around that kind of immediate response from audiences and and kind of critics. I mean, is is it nerve wracking? Do you want to kind of hide away, or do you kind of go, well, you know, bring it on? Yeah, I think it's there's a, there's a slight sense, I suppose, because I work in the theatre a lot, and opening night is so scary because. Um, you don't want to mess it up, you know, because you, you're, you're, you're performing in front of all these scary people, critics and your peers and all that. Whereas when you've made the movie, you've made the movie and usually you've seen the movie. So it's so much more celebratory and there's a great buzz. I do think you get a sense of whether people are following it or not. But I always think it's really nice to be, what I love about the Dublin Film Festival is that people coming in and I, I remember it over the years, you know, international stars or filmmakers coming in um, and uh, talking about their work is really, really extraordinary. And I, I feel very lucky because when I was starting out as an actor in films and in theatre, but particularly in films, um, the the tax incentives in Ireland for making films was really good. There were an awful lot of films we made in Ireland in the 90s and, and, and uh, mm. the early uh, 2000s. And um, so there was an awful lot of activity. Uh, um, and I just hope that, um, well, I really hope that that atmosphere that was around at the time that there was a, quite a lot of autonomy in Ireland, you know, there was, there was a lot of very um, uh, singular voices. Um, uh, and I'm always very protective in Ireland that we make Irish stories, that we don't try and ape an American story or a British story, that we, we, we have a real sort of singular voice and a real confident voice because we are, I do think writing is um, revered in Ireland because we're natural storytellers. And so the Dublin Film Festival has been a real, um, uh, source of inspiration, I think, for a lot of young people interested in film or acting or whatever it is, because you go, oh, wow, and when, and when international people can come in and, and admire our work, um, it, it really builds our confidence, you know, um, because uh, that's all it takes. It just doesn't require, like the, these films we're talking about, you know, as I say, with Drinking Crude, we made it for nothing. Korea was made for nothing. A lot of the movies, most of the films that I've made have been made, you know, with a little bit of... Um, uh, toughness and in, in the in, in this to survive making a film that doesn't have the backing of a huge studio is is really really difficult. But all you need is just authenticity and um, uh, people who are passionate. You don't need a huge amount of um, budgets and you know to make something that's really singular and, and beautiful and memorable. Um, I think there's a great mistake that you think, oh well, if we had sort of fifteen million to make a film. I've actually really noticed that on some big budget things, not having um, uh, an obstacle is actually can be a very uh, bad thing. You know, I think you need to have obstacles. You need to go, oh my God, we're losing the light. Let's try and really focus. And uh, and so I, I really I really hope that those uh, smaller films, kind of satellite films, um, the ones that people really remember are still, you know, financed. And uh, that's what the Dublin Film Festival for me is is highlights and so um i i hope people now um you know post covid really feel confident to go out and um and go to the movies because it's you can watch a film at home but i don't want us to get used to it because i think that feeling of of being in a film with lots of people and settling in into the dark and you doing that together is a singular human experience um um, so yeah, I hope the Savoy um, gets rebuilt for that purpose. No, absolutely. I mean, I think the other side to it, and you've mentioned something there, is is I'm, I was always conscious when I started going to the festival that I was seeing films that I wouldn't have seen from cultures that I had never been to, yeah. from filmmakers yeah. who I didn't know, and it literally is that no notion of kind of discovery of of finding yeah. you know other uh, you know artists you know working yeah. in parallel somewhere around the globe, and I think. You know, for me, the kind of films at two o'clock and six o'clock or, you know, that yeah. you, you kind of the, the kind of small, slightly more offbeat discoveries are, are genuinely sometimes the gems. And they're the ones that you remember. They're genuinely because you feel like you've discovered and some little secret has has been revealed to you. And, and it makes them very special. I mean, as great as all the big kind of Marvel movies and everything are and the big budget films, I don't think a lot of them are people's favorite film. I don't think they go, oh my God. They're, they serve a purpose and I think they're great joyful things, but I think I think those little individual films think, oh, that's really special, even if it's just a part of it or or just it just increases our empathy. 
just go, oh, that's the way another person lives in yeah. New Zealand. And actually, it's very similar to somebody who lives in, you know, Limerick. You know, it's, it's, it's um, uh, the story. I'm not saying New Zealand is like Limerick. <laughs> but I do think there's something interesting is that when, when we were growing up, we yeah. didn't have a huge amount of access to foreign language cinema. Do you know what no. I mean? So actually that's one of the things that a festival does is it, it does, does give absolutely. you, you know, it's not on our national broadcasters. It's, it's relatively difficult and it feels like it's possibly heading back to a similar dynamic. So you have to kind of cherish these kind of, you know, opportunities to see as much as we can. And it's interesting that you're talking about working kind of with, with different kind of international directors, because the next one I wanted to ask you about was um, the Anton Chekhov, the yeah. tool. And um, that yeah. you made with, with Fiona Glasgow. Yes, yeah. That's a really beautiful film, actually. Again, not one that um has been <laughs> has been widely seen. Um, but yeah, it's based on a short a short story a story by Chekhov, who, who who I've often thought is a very uh cinematic um uh, writer. I mean he's obviously known as a playwright, but um yeah, uh we shot that in Croatia in 2009. Me and Fiona, another great friend of mine, and um uh St absolutely stunningly beautiful um, cinematography and ve very cinematic stuff. Um, and people, you know, uh, uh, people, again, like like what we were saying there a few, a few minutes ago, people write to me about that film because once you know a, a secret little film like that, you know it really well. You go, oh, I really remember, I really remember sort of individual moments in that film. And so I was really genuinely, Dublin, um, I think maybe because of the Irish connection, and we were so thrilled because it was—it's difficult to get distribution for a, a a film, you know, that's based on Anton Chekhov. It's not, you know, box office gold. So it was just wonderful to have that um, that uh, ex exposure for it, and uh, uh, you know, that's all you want. You just want to be able to celebrate what you've made, and uh, yeah, that was that was terrific. That was up in Parnell. That was up in Cineworld. Yeah, it was. And I, I remember afterwards, and I am going to share the story, but I love it so much. It's when your your mum had a season ticket and she took me through all of her choices. And I started <laughs> getting, that's so good. Oh my God, you've got a fantastic <laughs> eye. And she had been to see loads, first off. I think she'd been to see something like 30. <laughs> you, know? And I, you know, so she's obviously, I mean, it's, and you're saying she's still seeing a lot of work. Well, do you know, I was just talking to her yesterday about it. I said, you know, that we were talking to each other today and, you know, post COVID and getting out there. And I was like, oh my God, you know, it's to have the confidence to go back out there. So um, maybe afterwards we'll have a little conversation about what, what Nora could go and see. Absolutely. Now I remember she was going to see all the, we had a Korean season on and she was going to see all the Korean yeah, films she and goes, she was telling she goes me. Their yeah. friend Dan O'Donovan and they, they, yeah, they're big. I love that. I love the fact that people who are sort of 19 year old film students and, and older people and everybody just, cinema just connects us, you know? And I love yeah. that it happens in Dublin and sort of maybe even cinemas that you wouldn't usually go to. The screen in Delir Street was another one that was, yeah. um, was a big, um, I loved that cinema. I know. I mean, I absolutely loved that cinema. I could get the bus ride. There was a bus bus station, bus stop right just outside it. And um, yeah. Um, and it's a and really the, good one at, 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 at the Dublin Film Festival as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a home for so many years. Do you know what I mean? That you actually kind of went, oh, I know this. This is my seat. This is where I sit. And I know who's going <laughs> yeah. to sit over there. You know, no, and it no, felt no. like a kind of community. And also that idea that you can go in on your own but you'll be walking out with someone and go, that was great, wasn't it? Sorry, yeah. I, I haven't seen this before. And suddenly it, it kind yeah. of changes, you know? Yeah, that feeling when you come out of a, uh, uh, a, a film and you're like, oh. I always hate when you come out of films and people start talking immediately. It always drives me mad. Because usually they're talking about, you know, rebuilding their conservatory or something. And you think, I always want to like, let it. Let it breathe, let it breathe, let it, let it. <laughs> infuse you um i'm very conscious that that we have a, a great friend in common but he, you've worked with him uh, a number of times but the the one of the films that i genuinely have just a huge smile when i say it is the stag yes uh, is working with john butler i mean yes, that indeed. was an amazing screening and again uh -huh. back in the savoy with the whole gang hugh yeah. um i mean it just peter mcdonald hugh o'connor amy oh my god so many people um uh, Brian Gleeson, just amazing, amazing. Michael Legg, just a real gang. It was, it was a really, that the Stag is a really, I think a really good example of um, a, a, a kind of confident Irish film in the sense is that it, 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 it was, 
it was very it's such a f- funny film it's sort of like john in, in 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 that sense it's full of heart and full of of warmth and it was um i think people just really love the film it's just there's a great chemistry in the thing it's about a you know a stag weekend with sort of these sort of south dublin kind of bookish boys and it's Ill- Ill- infiltrated by a character called this stag weekend by by a uh, character called the machine who's a real you know not bookish boy played by brilliantly by peter mcdonald and so yeah we had a, we had a screening we had the screening there and it was a proper big premiere and we all yeah. got dressed up and it was it was great it was a really really brilliant brilliant night and we had a big campaign for it and it was just sort of like a, an unapologetically commercial irish film yeah um and it's that's been so popular around the world it really has it's called a bachelor weekend in uh in America um but it still exists you know because people still you know with new work and everything people go back that's one of the really nice things about the streaming services is that they go back and see films that you might have made before so you know films still exist in a way that they you know for longer amounts of time than they used to um and then we went and we uh, uh that was in 2012 and then in 2015 we made Handsome Devil John and I together again um which is another beautiful and also was that the opening or the that was closing night I think yeah which again just I mean I I did say it to John that I just he I always have a kind of query about kind of closing night because they want to leave people happy you want to send them out into the streets and onto the rest of the year do you know what I mean with a kind of sense of hope and he does make these beautifully warm films that just have this huge heart yeah so handsome devil I don't know if you were able to come for that screening but it again we had Fionn yeah. and Nicholas and Mo Dunford and Amy was in it again um, I don't think I was was I I'm, I don't think I don't think you were I think it was about I mean you, you were busy you know yeah it was it was 2016 it would have been that 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 year but it was I mean it it's a screening at your film that we actually showed last year. Um, Rebecca came out to talk to to a gang of students at UCD, and they all had just watched it to me, you know, before she came in, and they literally just again these huge smiles that they actually yeah, had yeah. seen it and you know were sharing it with other people. Um, and I love your character. There's, I just yeah, think it's a, it's he a, is it's a, a really wonderful character, really. Um... And I love the fact that it was a com- commercial film that sort of talked about Irish sport. It talked about being gay in Ireland. It talked about so many really uh, subjects that you wouldn't necessarily marry together that John just sort of does does, does brilliantly. And again, it was kind of a, a, um, a commercial film to a certain degree. It's a sort of a crowd pleaser. And again, that's another one internationally that people people love because it, it's on Netflix, I think. Um, but... Uh, yeah, God, wow, what a lot of what a lot of movies. You've I, this is what I'm saying. I mean, we, we, we're we're going to come up now to 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 one that was I said kind of uh, dismantled by the weather, but we got there, which is the the last film, which is the film that you made um, with Marco Rowe. And when I say the last film, I mean the last film that we've screened in the festival. It's obviously there's been many many others. Yeah, but it was Delinquent Season with yes. uh, Eva and uh, uh, Catherine Walker and Killian Murphy. Yes, yeah, that was great. And that was also, and that was delayed by, there was a huge no. snowstorm. <laughs> snowstorm, snow devastating. <laughs> I mean, it really was, because everyone got, got so excited to um, to present the film. And then, and then, I mean, that's, a, a snowstorm feels like nothing now, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels like, like a minor inconvenience. <laughs> exactly. I mean, at least we were allowed out of our house. You could go out if you wanted. You just... It was weird because you were meant to come in on the Saturday. The, the screening was on the Saturday night. And I think on the Thursday, we just got this huge, just, you know, snow kind of like just descended all over the country and everything just stopped. I mean, we had films locked in cinemas and um, and it became a bit weird, to be quite honest, because we did try to put some up, you know. So we had a couple, I think, on the Sunday, but everybody was, you know, in snow boots and walking in and leaving their cars and, Remember Alan Gilman? Sundance. It. Yeah, it was Sundance in Dublin. Do you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it changed. It changed the whole dynamic because you know, as yeah. I said, everyone's kind of saying, "Oh no, you know, I'd, I'd love to stay in chat, but I have to get home before the dark." Do you know what I mean? Or the alarm, or whatever <laughs> like that. It's a whole. Yeah. Little did we know what we had in store for us. <laughs> exactly. If we had known then, we would have just said, "Fine." Exactly. We're like, "Jeez, bit of bit of snacked. Jeez, get out." <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, asking about, uh, talk, talking about snow, I am going to remind you about this, but I think, did you go with John and Rebecca and a whole gang to Les Ark in, in um, because a I skiing, remember. A skiing film festival. A skiing film festival. Well, I, want to, I want to mention this because I think when I met everybody, they said, oh, no, 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 what's going on? Andrew's up on the slope. And I went, okay. And then I went, hold on, he's in the new Bond film. And I was convinced <laughs> <laughs> that something terrible was going to happen, and that <laughs> our our bond, you know, I mean, our bond uh, actor was going to be laid up. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, terrible. It's quite James Bondy to be up there. Although my skiing, I have to say, isn't very um, uh, James Bond um, ready. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we had this bizarre um, experience where we went to the film festival Lazar, and we screened the stag. Yeah. And uh, John and I shared, shared a chalet. I remember sitting out thinking, this is brilliant. And then I remember all of us were in a um, bus on one of those mountains, one of those mountains, but like on the side of a mountain. And you know, they like bus drivers in the mountains, you always think, I'm definitely going to die because you're like teetering over the side of the, the thing. Um, but in this case, we actually did get stuck. So all the cast and crew and Rebecca and Rob and me and John and everybody, Pete, had to get out of this bus. It was actually really scary. It was like, um, it's like, uh, what's that film? Force Majeure. <laughs> Force Majeure, except Ireland. They shot John it John was the one who legged it away. That's where they shot Force Majeure. Yes, it wasn't it? So I believe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, it, but yeah, so it's amazing where, where the places you go. To film festivals. Yeah, I mean, Dublin is relatively normal when there's no snow, but then you actively went to Les Arc to, uh, to hang out. I know. Skiing. And the altitude, I remember you used to come down on the bus, the three hour trek back to the airport, and the altitude yeah. would actually make your, your ears pop. So I hope Les Arc, is that still going? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're all, I mean, a lot of the film festivals, I think, have kind of got back up and running. Do you know what I mean? I think they're, you know, the, the, the conversation is usually, are you online or physical or do a hybrid yeah. version of it? But I think Les Arc, as far as I'm aware, is all, you know, good to go. I mean, I think good. that's one of the questions I was going to ask you is about that kind of landscape. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the kind of where film festivals will be, do you know what I mean? Post pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, they're obviously a kind of showcase for a new work. Um, I, I feel, I feel like, um, I think it's important that we try and not get used to this too much. For me, um, I think there's just something about connecting and so many, so many of the film festivals, you know, that have been around the world and, you know, Helsinki or, you know, just various Krakow, we went out to me and John went out and we went, you know, just Edinburgh and, you know, Toronto. And there's so much about bringing people together. So you can, of course, connect with other people, but part of it is, is being able to talk or get into an argument with somebody <laughs> in Helsinki at a film festival. These filmmakers just getting into these big arguments. And I was like, like, not just impassioned arguments about what their favorite films are or what where they see the future of cinema. And, and, the, and usually there's a hub, you know, a place where people can go and um, hang out with international filmmakers. And that's what it's all about. That's what a festival is. You know, it's, that's what a festival is. So. Um, I hope we can just power on, power on through, and um, because of course, this having everything on on screen is what that's what we're looking at. But to be looking, uh, cinema is cinema to my mind is is a big screen, and I feel very romantic about that. And I don't mean romantic in, in the sense that I feel silly about it. I, I feel that I just feel like that it's a very important uh, thing to share stories with other people um, because um, isolation is a word that has entered our, the vernacular in such a strong way. And I just think we have to, we have to go to the, we have to make a willful effort to try and not um, have become apathetic, you know, and to sort of, of course we can order everything and have survive in that way. But I think we actually have actively now to sort of, go out to the theater festivals and go out to the theater and go out to the movies much more to actually just say, I'm actually going to do that. It's nearly my, if you love something, you have to support it. So I would say to anyone who's watching, just like go out and tell, you know, get, get people birthday presents from cinema tickets and theater tickets, because I think that's what we're going to have to do in order to, to keep that community alive. No, that's beautifully, 
beautiful, beautifully put. And I think you're absolutely right. I think the other side to it is, is, is filmmakers need to see their, their work on the big screen. And we, meet, yeah. we need to meet, make films that you see on a big screen, not yeah. something that you can pause to go off and make tea or something else, you know? Yeah, the, the, focus. I think, I think we're starting to lose our focus a little bit because, our, you know, we're attached to our phones the whole time. And as you say, and it's, 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 uh, it's, we just become a little bit blinkered. And so the idea of hearing other people laughing or other people going, <gasps> It, it, it's a wonderful feeling to, to go, yeah, we're, we're all sort of the same. And that's a very important um, thing for us to remember because it allows us to be kinder to each other. Genuinely, I think it, it allows us to understand that it's not just your um, vision of the world that exists, that other people might laugh at something that you think is devastatingly moving. And that's what we have to coexist with. You know, we have to understand that everybody's different. And sometimes movies make you um, almost, you know, have an almost with uh, 800 people in the Savoy can have have 800 people feeling almost exactly the same emotion, right? Exactly the same stillness or to be falling across the, falling, falling over themselves laughing. It's an incredible thing to experience. Um, so like, you know, long may it continue genuinely. Oh, Andrew, you're going to break my heart. That's beautiful. That's a perfect <laughs> description. No, it is. It is on oh, no, this, well, this mean, art form that we love. I feel very strongly about it, I've got to say. No, you're, this is this is absolutely gold and, and, and definitely something I, I feel very personally myself, that we have to go and and, yeah. and, and see the work and, and celebrate the art, you know, and, and experience it to, yeah. together. Um, one quick question, our final question, before we go to our kind of quick our quick fire questions, but I just wanted, is there, are there films that you're looking forward to seeing that are coming up over the next couple of months? Are you kind of like aware of some of the kind of- I have uh, to see all the, it's a really good time for movies, isn't it? Because of, um, because uh, I just, uh, last night I just watched um, The Power of the Dog, the Jane Campion movie, which is beautiful. I have yet to see our own Jesse Buckley. <laughs> In, in The Lost Daughter, because yeah. um, they've taken that off the internet for some reason. I don't know why I can't find it. Um, but I'm, I'll, um, I'll maybe... Uh, but that's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. All these Irish actors, I've got to say, I mean, all the Irish actors doing so well. I haven't seen Belfast yet. Um, um, I saw Jamie uh, uh, about a month ago at the, at the theatre, and I mean, he was so excited he was going over to America to, to promote it and everything. And it's just so wonderful. Kieran Hines, the fact that he's been celebrated in this way is just so... I know. Amazing. We did a, a short movie together a couple of years ago called The Hope Rooms. He's just, he's exactly the kind of person that should be fated in this way. And, you know, just everybody, Saoirse and Colin and, you know, just, it's incredible, Ruth Nega and just like everybody. And uh, I feel so um, Killian, another, like, it's just so extraordinary. Like the, 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 um, I feel very proud actually to be involved in the, in the, in, um, to have known a lot of these people from, yeah. from when I was 18 or 19 and just watching them grow and to see the, the amount of stuff that they do. And, um, you know, we should be very, very, very proud of that. I, I, I do feel enormously proud, and and uh, and I think it's one thing for 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 Irish filmmakers to be aware of is that your Irishness, even if you're working internationally, never leaves you. You're always dying to be asked to be in an Irish film, and I don't think it requires. This is what I, I really genuinely. It doesn't require a huge fancy budget, or you know what you need to what you need to create in order to attract really top drawer talent, so to speak, is give them right, really good parts. Everybody, every, you, the person doesn't need to be, to, if you give somebody three good scenes and that you got a lot of bang for your buck, you don't have to be playing the lead role. You can just come in and do something really funny that you, or whatever it is, but write really good roles that, that even within a supporting character that um, has a beginning and sort of middle and an end and give them things that they want to say. Don't waste the opportunity and send them with confidence to people that you really want to be in your film. Even if you think that they're yeah. not going to be interested or you don't have enough money or whatever. If you, if you have confidence, that's what, that's what we need. And that's what art artists should have. Um, and uh, I, I'm aware for a lot of filmmakers, you need to get financing. So if you want to get financing, you sometimes have to attract, attract somebody who's going to sell your film. So write with confidence for those people. And you never know if, if an, an, an artist, an actor is, 
um, still interested in acting, you will go anywhere. And I, Irish people, I, I certainly, um, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I'm always, um, it sounds like I'm begging for a job. No. I kind of no. am. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, like to, to be able to support Irish filmmakers is very important to a lot of people, even if you haven't worked in Ireland for a long time. And, and, and that's why, you know, even talking to you today, you just I, I just leapt at the chance because uh, it, it, it never leaves you. And I hope my relationship with Irish film can, continues because it's really, really um, important to me. So. Um, so, yeah, give us a job. Well, do you know, we have some fantastic Irish films in the program this year, documentaries really? and features and, and the Irish language kind of explosion that's happening is again, you know, kind of becoming really, really interesting to, to watch the kind of international focus, you know, and Colleen Kuhn was in the Berlin Alley. Yes, yeah, so I believe. Week. So, you know, there's wonderful energy around the kind of emerging talent as well as, as obviously the established talent that you've mentioned. So it's a really yeah. healthy film industry and community you know that's brilliant well that's the meaning it can all exist it all like there's you know that's what i'm saying this idea that we're all doing the same thing and i think sometimes the idea of you know when you sort of move beyond working just in irish films that there's that, that there's a sort of there's sort of levels at which you go to which is nonsense to me because that idea of doing drinking crude with Eva and Colin and you know you don't mind doing that if you if you believe in what you're doing you you, you really put up with anything and they're more fun and more life affirming that sometimes in doing these big things and um uh that's I suppose that's what I mean it's just a, it's that everybody's everybody's in the same boat everybody if you're Steven Spielberg or you're somebody who's just made your first Irish language film you want you're nervous you want to, you're writing for an audience and and you want to be there for the audience you want to see the audience that's the that never ever leaves you so uh, so the scale of the, the the festival or the scale of the budget or the scale of the actor or the scale of whatever it is to me is not uh, important what, what you want is the scale of the feeling that you know what I mean that a tiny yeah. little film can it's like my left foot my left foot one of our most that has such authenticity that film um you know i saw it kind of recently and all those like monster talents weren't considered monster talents then yeah. but they had this sort of authenticity and confidence about it and that wasn't shot for millions of pounds but it becomes this culture has this huge cultural legacy and, and that's within us all, you know. Yeah, I think the other thing that it, it, the talking and listening to you, what you're saying is also heart. I feel like some of the films that you've mentioned have, have, have this heart to them, this kind of like depth to them, you know, an emotional depth to it, and that's what resonates with global audiences. You know, yeah, uh, John's work. Yeah. Yeah, it's the specific. I think that's what it is. It's like I don't like it when when you see versions of a different country's. Um, you know, trying to make an Irish version of something, you know mm. what I'm saying? That there's some, that people understand, even if they don't understand the language or the specifics of where, where whether it's something, people don't, internationally don't really understand the mm. difference between Leinster and Munster and Connacht and Ulster, you know, they, they're not fully, but they can understand that there's a very specific um, thing that exists in all countries, you know what I mean? So. So that sort of urbane thing that you get in the stag, which is about South Dubliners, even though they don't really want, know the difference between, oh, a South D Dublin kind of accent or sort of North Dublin thing, or the way that's a kind of, there's a, there's a cultural thing that we understand as Irish people. Actually, internationally, people do get that because they go, yeah. oh, that's like, you know, they do, you know, they, they just get it because, yeah. and the more specific you are, you don't go, oh, we're not really going to understand. I remember we had, I remember there was a thing about a nappy. <laughs> what was that? But anyway, there was a big, there was a big, um, huge uh, uh, arguments about whether you should use the word nappy or diaper <laughs> for international sales. I don't remember what film it was. And it seems ridiculous to me that you would say diaper in the middle of a, a film set. <laughs> In, in Dublin, nobody's ever going to say that. You know what I mean? But there are pressures sometimes when when there are outside pressures. You know, people are trying to sell the film, um, and that's actually when you start to lose the authenticity. Even it, it, and, and actually to 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 try and open the doors internationally, you actually close them 
by being trying to cater for everybody. So, um, so it's keeping it as you know, uh, keeping it as Irish as possible. I think. Oh, I think that is the best pitch I've heard in many time out now. The flood of screenplays are going to come into you now, Andrew, before we actually even get to the end of the festival. <laughs> yeah, about nappies. <laughs> Like, Me listen, I, I'm going to throw some quick fire questions at you. So see, I hope okay. hope you you can uh, can uh, yeah, let's see some quick, of these. Let's see how so, quick the fire is. I think you might have answered this. Your favorite childhood movie? Oh, it's definitely ET. Yeah, is it ET? Okay, definitely. that's. And um, what's the role that you would have loved to have played? Oh crikey! Um, I always think that. Any part that I have not got auditioned for or whatever, I've always seen it and gone, oh God, yeah, no, that's, I can see why I didn't get that. Either someone's done a much better job or it wasn't for me or whatever. Uh, there's not a lot of, there's not, I don't have that regret. Genuinely, I'm not trying to avoid the question. No. I don't, no, I just, I, I, I don't, um, the great thing about acting is that you move on to the next thing. You go, all right, you did that. You're devastated. As my mother used to say, she used to say, you're allowed one, you can go to audition. It must be awful. I don't have kids myself, but it must be awful having children who are actors <laughs> because they have these auditions. And you go, oh my God, and you see them re rehearsing, blah, blah, blah. And then they don't get it. And you think, oh, this is just awful. But what my mum used to say, particularly when I was young, she'd say, you can have one day, a huffing day, one day, and you can be as pissed off as you like. And then, and don't try to say, oh, well, you know, it's probably just as well. And actually, blah, blah, blah. Don't do any of that. Just have one solid day of going, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then the next day you can pick, you can pick yourself up and forget about it. It's good. It's good advice because you can really dr drown in your own um, uh, self-pity for one 24 hours. And was she really nice to you as well? With the whole family? She was very, very, she was nice very good about that. Both my parents actually were, you know, very, very nice about it. God love them. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure? Um, your, what movie is your guilty pleasure? I like any gross out movie. <laughs> Come on, name them, Andrew. Like, like Elf, uh, any, uh, Will Ferrell comes like, comes, comes, um, I love I love a Will Will Ferrell movie. I love I love um, Judd Apatow movies as well. I don't feel guilty about them actually. I love yeah. Kristen Wiig. Wig. I think she's a total genius. Um, kind of Amer I think Americans are really good at um, you know like the Forty Year Old Virgin is a brilliant um, those, those kind of films. I, I'll watch. We've I can actually watch, like I can watch I can watch a good old Jennifer Lopez rom com too. No problem. Apparently the new one is very good. Marry me. Marry me. Yeah. Marry me. Yeah. On that topic, though, I would say that we've got a comedy strand in the festival because I genuinely thought that that was one of the things that I really missed about going to the cinema was when an entire audience just yeah. bursts out laughing. Yeah, That's yeah. a big connector for me, you know? Yeah, totally. Totally, yeah. Um, and and comedy is really difficult. It's really hard. <laughs> That's why I was so pleased with the stag and Handsome Devil as well. But, you know... It's really difficult to make people because laughing is involuntary. It's involuntary. You do it. It surprises you like, oh, my God, it's difficult to make people do that. And but and to sort of make, make it as a mass uh, hysteria, hysteria thing is really difficult. So hearing them laugh during uh, the, the screening of this die was just bliss. There's also a, uh, there's also a huge. Um snobbery around comedies. I mean, Absolutely. I know in film festivals, they kind of see that the longer, the more dramatically dangerous, dark, depressing, mm. the better the film. And comedies are kind of like an entertainment that it's very nice, like a palate cle cleanser yes. for Absolutely. the next four it's, hours. It's, it's total nonsense because one doesn't exist without the other. It's the comedy tra tragedy face, you know. They, they really don't. It's, they, and all, my, all the best films that are and the best actors actually are the ones who have a sense of humor. You know, that's no, there's no doubt about it. I think it's just awards baiting. I think there's something about emotionality that people feel is, um, I don't know, somehow more worthy. Um, but the best, it's always when we're looking towards the light rather than looking towards the dark that you're actually really moved. Um, on that topic then, who's the funniest person you've ever worked with? It's probably, it, 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 I, it, it it pains me to say it, but it's probably John Butler. Ah, oh, he'd love that. 
He probably would, which is why it pains me to say it. <laughs> there will be people who will expect a certain Phoebe Waller-Bridge to be included in that list. I well, think. Phoebe Waller-Bridge is like divine. Everything you think about Phoebe Waller-Bridge is true. She's an absolute um, legend. I, I, I really, I really believe this. Laughing is very important <laughs> to me. But if you don't have a sense of humor, you shouldn't be in this industry. You shouldn't be in it. It's not, it's not, it's not. And there's not very many people who would say, I don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> but like, you know, having a sense of humor, particularly as a director, I've seen a lot, lots of actors, you play a part and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, lots of actors have to, have to, um, you know, laugh a lot. But it's unusual, more unusual for a director to sort of instigate laughter on the set. And it's a very, very bonding thing, which is something that, you know, I worked with Lena Dunham this year, um, Emily Mortimer um, last year as directors. And um, they are incredibly funny people. And when you are working as you do in movies, 12 hours a day and people are exhausted and you have to ask them to go over time, you know, by an hour. If you're having fun, the people, the crew will say, all right, if you're, if you are, if it's just work, 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 they're not going to do it. So it's, it's not only is it just um, feed your soul, it's also a practical thing to do. And John um, uh, is just knows how to have a good time. I, I think that's um, uh, um, uh, one of his, uh, one of his two attributes. This is, this is feeling like it's very personalized in some cases. Um, <laughs> final question is just, is there anybody that you want to work with? Is there anybody in the cinema landscape that you'd be interested in working with? Well, I, I, I would like to just put, put on my, um, I don't know, put on like a coat and a scarf and a hat and join the big long queue for the people who want to work with Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Because he, to me, is, uh, he's, uh, he's the best filmmaker in the world. Punch Drunk Love is my all-time favorite film. Um, I've nev I'll have i never forget seeing that film for the first time. And again, sort of, uh, all his films are beautiful. The Master is another just extraordinary, brilliant film. But he's got that playful um, thing. He's able to, he understands what... Um, comedy is and that's why he's able to he's actually why he's able to um, create things that are so um, dark and he's got a very specific way of working I believe I'm working with uh, Robert Elswit at the moment on Ripley and uh, the genius cinematographer and he's worked with Paul millions of times and he's he, the way he talks about how Paul Thomas Anderson works is just really interesting just you know you, 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 there's a kind of prototype as to what way films are made and I think it's I think it, it, it's really interesting when uh, filmmakers have a very singular way of making their own work. Like Ken Loach, he has such a singular, you know, you don't do, you, there's not a lot of millions of, um, you know, checks and doesn't, you don't have to hit a mark and, you know, you finish at four o'clock in the day. It's, and, you know, on top of all his, his um, you know, improvisational stuff that he, you know, he's so well known for. But, you know, that very individual way of making films, um, Dakota Fanning, who I'm working with at the moment, is um, she was talking about working with Quentin Tarantino and, the, and just the different atmospheres on on different sets. It's a really it's it's wonderful to go into people's worlds. Mostly, sometimes it's not. I'm gonna <laughs> just finish up because you mentioned the Lena Dunham um, project, which is Catherine called Birdie. Yeah, isn't that Catherine called Birdie. Yes. And I wanted to ask you a bit about just Heart of Darkness, which sounds fantastic. Oh yeah, well I don't know very very much about that again, like because of the um, the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. Uh, things you sort of are attached to something, and then they 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 have sort of different journeys. And because it's a lot of that stuff is based on getting people's voices and animation and all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll we'll have to we'll have to see about that one. Um, but Lena's film is I think going to be. She's incredibly special. Um, uh, she has this other movie out, which the name escapes me. I think it's called Sharp Stick. Is that right? It's in, it was in Sundance. I haven't yeah. seen. I haven't seen it. But, um, I... but um, it's yeah. Um, 
Billy Piper has seen it, who's in the movie, and um, she said it's just the most extraordinary film. She's, um, I kind of think Lena has a kind of an Irish sensibility. I don't know how, why I do, but she's, she's a really wonderful, um, brilliant person who I think is about to have a real renaissance because um, she's an expert um, filmmaker. That's really exciting. So this is more more uh, Andrew Scott that we'll be seeing in the next couple yeah, of, of, yeah. of months, which is yeah. which is good to know. And you're presently in Rome doing Ripley. Yes. So when when will you be hap- next back home, or is there? I'm hoping to come back pretty soon. Actually, I'm hoping to come back pretty soon. Yeah, I've been I've been shooting Ripley for a very long time. Um, it's a epic. Um, it's very very close to the original books. Um, it's been directed by Steve Zalian and brilliantly written by Steve Zalian. And uh, it looks extraordinary. We've, we've traveled all around Italy and we'll finish in, in New York. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited about it. I really, really hope um, it, it's as special as it, as it feels to do. Um, but yeah, it's been enormously, enormously hard work. And I've got to say, I miss home a lot. Maybe that's yeah. why I'm wearing green today. I need well, a bit of courage. It- we miss you so thank you so much, Andrew. You've been fantastic and taken us through all these different films. And oh, absolutely. thank you. I've loved so much. It was yeah. absolutely brilliant, and I hope it goes really, really, um, really well. And uh, and I hope people come out and in, in, in as much as they f- feel they they can. And yeah, buy tickets, buy film tickets, people for people's birthdays. It's a good thing. To, it's a good thing to it's do. It's a very good thing to do. And I will send you a list of recommendations for your mum as well. Will you please? Because I will. Love I will yeah. absolutely do that. Andrew thank Scott, you so thank much. you so much. Thanks, Thanks a million. Lots of love. Take care. Bye, bye now. Bye. bye.